Hi, Hi Valder. Hi. Well, who, what two fine gentlemen do I have on the line today? John Legato and Perfecto Sanchez. Well, thank you so very much for joining us. John, I'll start with you. Tell me what you are doing with the American uh, veterans. Well, I was a Marine back in 68 during the Tet Offensive in Vietnam, which was the, the North Vietnamese attempt to end the war. And they had a, a city called Hue that was the cultural center of Vietnam. And there were 10,000 enemy troops there. On 31 January, uh, 152 Marines uh, went up against the, the 10,000 enemy. And I see that's still very emotional to you. I can imagine that staying with you all of your life. Yes, uh, I think that uh, I don't think there's a day that goes by that I, I don't think about the men I served with and especially the ones that didn't come back. I'm so very sorry, but as an American, we thank you for all that you did. Well, you're welcome. Well, I know we're going to be seeing this on, what are we going to be seeing on television in relationship to this? So it's, it's, the show is called Against the Odds, and it's premiering on the American Heroes channel on Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern and every Monday for six weeks. And what you're going to be seeing, it's a real-life story of Band of Brothers who stuck together to overcome unsurmountable odds and really just the human aspect of what it takes to serve in our, in our country's military. Why now? Why why show us this now? And you know, uh, is it because we're, we're we're trying to end the war in Iraq and and well, those people are trying to start another war over there? But anyway, is it, is it a good time for against the odds? Uh, go ahead. I mean, I think that's a very good question. I think it's like why not now? I mean, I think we should always pay respect to what it takes for our, to the country, for the people that really serve our country and it's not just the military members. I think what the American Heroes Channel is, is, is doing starting today, they're going to start profiling the different men and women that serve in different aspects of our society. So we can choose to really um, like look up to our basketball players or our rap stars or our reality TV heroes, but I think any time that we have the opportunity to, to thank and to, and to pay respect to people that defend our way of life and, and, and represent our country in a good way, we should. That's correct. Now, this is going to be narrated by Rob Lowe. This is going to give us our real-life band of brothers, correct? Correct. All right, then. Uh, a lot of people, though, don't remember if we're going to talk about the Vietnam War, John. You know, uh, my kids don't remember that. I mean, that, that's almost foreign to them. How will we make them understand through the uh, television show? Well, uh, war... And combat is timeless. I, I mean, I think that uh, the guy in the Revolutionary War has the fog of war. He only sees the war through his eyes. So it's a timeless. What, what your children are going to see is inspirational stories. They're going to be proud of the American military personnel. They're going to be proud of their country. And that, that whole issue is timeless. It could be Perfecto's generation, World War I, wh whatever. Perfecto. What do you want? What do you want the listening audience to take away from watching uh, against the odds? I want them to realize just um, again what it takes to to serve, and there are things greater than ourselves and what we think are tough problems. And it doesn't matter to me whether or not they remember the word Ramadi or Iraq or whether or not I was even a Marine or a soldier. That doesn't matter to me. I want them to take away just you know, respect for mankind. I want them to take away just um, maybe like a little bit of inspiration that they want to do something better with, with themselves. And I think that's the essence of what it takes to serve, what it takes to, to fight alongside your, your brother and, and, to, and what it takes to, to overcome a difficult situation. John, I'd like to ask you, uh, with patriotism, I just read a meter, you know, it, it's kind of waning. It's not an, at an all-time high. Do you think this can help infuse patriotism in people in America? Because America is the greatest place to live. I keep saying this every day. I've traveled the world. This is the greatest place to live on the planet. Well, you, you cannot watch this series and not have your heart swell with patriotism. I'm glad. I'm really, really glad. Because, you know, when I grew up... And, we're going to talk about that a long time ago. But in school, you know, you said the Pledge of Allegiance, the flag was everywhere. You felt like you were American. And I think sometimes some of that is not as strong 
so people may not feel bonded to America. So maybe something like this will give us a little bit of that bonding back to America. I really like this. I can't wait to see this. When do you guys want us to watch? Well, it will be Monday nights on the American Heroes Channel at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. All right. Well, thank you guys. I want to thank you so very much for being a part of it and letting us know about Against the Odds on the American Heroes Channel. I am thanking you, John Lisco and Perfecto Sanchez. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Martita, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Velder. This is Martita Hara with all you. Oh, I got it. Martita Hara. Oh, I yes. like that. Yes. Oh, that's so sexy. Oh, I like that. Martita, thank you for joining us. It's springtime. I'm in Dallas, Texas, so it's really springtime. Oh, that's where I live now. I just moved to Dallas. Oh, you're going to love it. It is. It's the greatest place on earth, and I'm not even from Dallas. <laughs> I'm loving every moment there. It's fantastic. It is. And yes, the spring is here, and we're seeing tons of fruits and vegetables in our market right now, and we want to take advantage of that, especially this month. March is National Nutrition Month, so we want to take advantage of all those beautiful fruits and vegetables that we're finding in the market. And aside from that, it's also the start of California strawberry season. And thank goodness California strawberries are always in season. So let's use them on our sweet dishes, on our savory dishes, because they're not just delicious, they're actually really good for us. They have tons of dietary fiber in there, vitamins, antioxidants, they're low in sugar. I mean, they're great on sweet dishes, savory dishes, fresh or frozen, go with strawberries. Okay, Martita. Okay, so we saw you on the next Food Network star. Now you're on the OWN Network, Homemade Simple. Okay, great. Give us a quick dish that we can make. Show, show us that you're really a star. What can I make? <laughs> well, we've got a great dish here right now. I've got a black bean strawberry quinoa spinach salad, which is delicious. You know, for me, I love really mixing it up. I like to touch all those notes, you know, something sweet, something savory, something salty, something vinegary. You know, let's just try to think about that when we're creating meals. Hit all of those notes, and this salad does just that. But also, we don't want to be in the kitchen the entire time, right? We want to enjoy our friends and family when they come over, and I know they're going to be coming over for Easter, for Mother's Day. So for that, I'm going to choose a honey-baked ham. These premium meats are fully cooked, they're ready to serve, and this crunchy glaze on this honey-baked ham, I've been eating it all morning. It is delicious. So you can choose the original honey-baked ham or the roasted or smoked turkey. Either way, your friends and family are going to love you. Yeah, that's great to have the centerpiece already done for you. That saves you a lot of time. Yes. It really does. I mean, when I'm entertaining, I don't make everything from scratch. I make a couple of things at home, and then you definitely need to have some of those ready-bought, ready-to-serve items. I mean, that's how you entertain. That way you can enjoy your guests. Well, okay. Uh, so Easter's coming. Fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. are, are bound for Easter. Any ideas for, for that celebration for us? Well, I love to make pestos all year long. So this time of the year, I'm making it with artichokes, basil, a little bit of goat cheese, some toasted almonds, fruity vegetable oil. Pestos are great with pasta, with fish, with chicken. I love to spread it on a sandwich even. And I love breakfast sandwiches. They remind me of home. And for my breakfast sandwiches, I use Eggland's Best Eggs. They stay fresher longer than any other brand of eggs. They have 25% less saturated fat, 
and they have double the omega-3 fatty acids and four times the vitamin D. And honestly, I love eggs. You give me a poached or fried egg anytime with anything and I'm a happy girl. That's at my house. We can't keep <laughs> eggs. I'm so serious. I know you got a, a chocolate granola and I know we don't have enough time. Can we go online and find that? Yes. Go to my website, go to martitahara.com. You will find my crunchy fruity granola. I have a couple of granola recipes on there and tons of other recipes and ideas there for you. So please visit me on martitahara.com and you can also visit us at moretipsforyou.com. We have all these recipes that we talked about here today on there and tons of entertaining tips for you. Martita, it was a pleasure talking to you. I'm going to run into you. It's a pleasure talking to you. I'm looking forward to running to you at Central Market, Whole Foods or something in Dallas. Oh, I'm sure we'll see each other. It's a small town. It's a big town, but with a small town feel. It is. Thank you, Martita. I really, really appreciate Thank you coming you. on the show and I look forward to talking to you soon. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Good morning. Is this Kevin Pierce? This is Kevin Pierce. And I'm a and si- Dr. I'm, uh, Yeah, sitting next to Dr. Andrew Stalker here. Hi. Dr. Starko, welcome to the Founder BB Show here live in Dallas, Texas. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having us on. Well, Kevin, uh, you are a former professional snowboarder. You carry the Olympic torch in Sochi. But also, I think maybe one of your most important things that people will know about you is that you are a TBI survivor. Yeah, you know, um, it's been crazy this uh, this brain injury that I sustained, and yeah, it's been um, it's been wild coming back from this, and you know what's kind of become possible, and the awareness I've been able to raise for um, you know, people that are going through brain injuries, and you know, also this um, little unknown disease called PBA that we're talking about here today. Okay, let me switch over to Dr. Andrew Starka. Dr. Starka, welcome. Would you explain this? Uh, a condition for us as a board certified neurologist and psychiatrist? Certainly. So PBA is a neurologic condition that can arise from a variety of neurologic illnesses. Traumatic brain injury is one, but also a person who has Alzheimer's disease or a stroke or multiple sclerosis could have PBA. There's an estimated 2 million people with PBA, of course, much of it unrecognized. When someone has PBA, they have loss of control over their emotion, laughing, and crying. So a person who has PBA might laugh or cry more than they want to. They might cry excessively in a situation where that's not called for, or they might laugh or cry spontaneously when it doesn't match one of their underlying emotions. This could be very socially um, awkward for them. You can imagine if a person had a crying episode at work or in another social situation that was not really matching the mood of the situation, then that would be you know, really awkward for that person. People wouldn't understand what was happening. They wouldn't understand why you were crying and it would be embarrassing potentially. And how many, do you have any numbers of the n- number of people who experience this? So there's an estimated 2 million people that have PBA, but much of it is unrecognized. And I think a lot of times it's thought of as depression. Let me give you an example. I have a patient who was in an automobile accident recently. And after his accident, he found himself crying a lot more than he was previously. He had hit his head in the automobile accident, resulting in a traumatic brain injury. He was crying in situations where he never would have before and he didn't understand it and he thought he was depressed, his family thought he was depressed. And I think this could happen a lot where someone is having crying symptoms, they're thought of to be depressed so they don't continue on and look for the diagnosis of PBA. 
If someone hears this and they think that they might have PBA, they can go to the website pbainfo.org. There's a self-assessment test there, and a person could take it to find out if their symptoms uh, are consistent with PBA or if they have the symptoms of PBA. Then they could take that information to their doctor and use that to think about things further. Kevin, let me ask you, since you experienced a traumatic brain injury, but now you're obviously at a different state, uh, how did you overcome this? Yeah, you know, I was um, I was lucky, and it's taken a lot of work and a long time and a lot of patience. But um, you know, the brain the brain heals slowly. It doesn't like to do anything quickly. I've learned, and um, it's taken a long time. It's uh, it's been just over four years now, and my brain's still healing, and I'm still getting better. And you know, it's um, it's gotten to the point now where I've you know been able to uh, you know, start teaching people about it, and it's been really cool to raise this awareness about brain injuries and PBA, and to you know allow people to understand that you may have these conditions, but you know, there is a treatment and there is a way to fix it. Okay, tell me how cool was it to carry the Olympic torch in Sochi? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty uh, That was pretty wild. I, um, I was going for that four years ago in Vancouver, but I just missed it, and I, uh, I got to go do it over in Russia, and it was a, uh, it's a whole different world over there. It was my first time ever uh, visiting Russia, and it was, uh, it was really cool to get to go over there and to be a part of those games experience of a lifetime. Well, Kevin, I thank you so very much for sharing. Dr. Starker, thank you for being so clear on your explanation of what it is. And once again, Dr. Starker, if you give me that website. Yeah, the website is pbainfo.org. Thank you both, guys. Thank you for being on the Valder Beebe Show. It's been my honor. Thanks for having us. much for staying with me through the break. Today I get to talk to Jack Nerat. He's the executive editor, excuse me, editorial director and executive marketing analyst for kellysbluebook.com. He's going to tell us about the best family cars for 2014. Jack, thanks so much for joining us. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. I really appreciate it. Well, I love talking about family cars because they're a little bit different because your lifestyle changes, so you kind of change cars. But in that family mode, what do we have that's safe, reliable, and very attractive? Well, we have 12 cars, and here's how we went about finding the 12 cars that we think are the absolute best family cars in the United States. Uh, we gathered up more than 20 cars to our Kelly Blue Book offices, and we had families from our staff and other families go through these cars and do what families do with cars. They loaded stuff into trunks and cargo areas. Uh, this is my daughter checking out uh, an entertainment system. Uh, we bounced around back seats. We installed child safety seats. We did all the things that families would do with vehicles because we know that versatility and the ability to carry stuff and people is, is really, really critical uh, to a great family car. Okay, so... What, what, what is your top recommendation? Or well, I've got, I've got several here. Actually, we recommend all 12, but I can talk about three very specifically. Uh, the Chevrolet Traverse is a terrific, terrific, versatile vehicle. We think it's uh, great in terms of overall cost effectiveness. It'll hold up to eight people. Uh, great am amount of interior space and versatility. I mean, again, the ability to fold down seats and put stuff in there and then put that seat back up and have a kid sit back there to do carpooling, all those kind of things. Very, very important. Uh, the the um, Nissan Rogue, which is brand new this year, is maybe for a little smaller family, uh, less expensive, 
uh, a little bit smaller. Great fuel economy, though, from its four-cylinder engine. Uh, we like it a lot. We think it's a terrific vehicle for that younger family with smaller kids. And then, of course, what, what list would be uh, complete about family cars without a minivan or two? We have a couple on our list, including the Honda Odyssey. We think it's a terrific minivan uh, with so many special features. Uh, it's fun to drive. The interior is like a luxury car in a lot of ways. And then the seating is very, very versatile. Again, seats fold down. They fold out of the way. The third row disappears for a flat luggage floor. Uh, seats fold out of the way if you want to carry longer items. It even has a vacuum, so uh, you can vacuum out the interior of the vehicle. So, yeah, that's yeah, uh, pretty cool stuff. I mean, and there are uh, uh, nine other great vehicles on our list, including several sedans. There's some great sedans out there. The new Chevrolet Impala is a terrific sedan. Of course, the Honda Accord uh, is uh, one of the family favorites uh, for a long time. And the Nissan Altima is another great, great um, family sedan. So there are so many vehicles out there. We, we're real aware that every family isn't the same, right? So uh, we want to have vehicles of various costs and uh, you know, various carrying capacities, too. Well, let me ask you this, Jack. When a car is selected by Kelly Blue Book, just say you're the top 12, does that give them a special place? You know, when you go to the dealership, do they say, hey, we've been selected by we Kelly We really think so, and we're seeing a lot of manufacturers kind of pick that, uh, what we call accolade, that, that kind of recognition up and publicize it because, of course, uh, people trust Kelly Blue Book. We've been around for uh, 88 years or so. Uh, we really think we have uh, gained the, the public's trust, and we work really hard to keep that trust. It's very, very important to us. And so uh, being labeled a Kelly Blue Book Best Family Car, we think, is uh, an important honor for each vehicle. Where can we find a listing of all 12 cars, especially for some, a family that's shopping for a car? Well, if you're shopping for a car, we recommend that you come to KBB.com. KBB, of course, for Kelly Blue Book. Uh, all that information, of course, is free. We rate every car every year. We have reviews of every car every year. Uh, well, of course, all the valuations you'd ever want uh, to help you price out your car and know what to pay when you go to the dealership. Uh, in fact, some in in indications of what dealerships you might want to go to, too. So uh, there's a world of information on our website for free. Well, Jack Rad, I want to thank you from kellybluebook.com for giving us that family information. you got to come back for, you know, us over 50 people who, you know, are having those crises and want those little fast cars. So yeah, well, I'm right with you, but I still have the family, too. So <laughs> I'm that age, but with family, with kids at home. So <laughs> I'm, Thanks, I'm right Jack there. Thanks, Jack I really appreciate Great it. Great to talk to you. Thanks. Valder, how are you? Can you hear me, Michael? I can. Is this Valder? This is Valder. Thank you so very much. You're very welcome. Well, you're live in Dallas, Texas. Thank you so much, Michael Smith, for joining us. Thank you. I had a chance to listen at him, and you are the answer to what I've been asking for for a long time. Well, Let me tell you what I that's mean. That's good. Okay. Tell me, please. Well, because uh, I'm a regular churchgoer. I attend a church. been there most of my life. And I noticed the songs are getting so away from the standards. And I'm always like, people crave ice cream. I want to hear, you know, uh, God our Father and great is thy faithfulness. And they're so few and far between. And now I have my own copy. Well, there you go. How about that? How about that? <laughs> I thank you so much. I'm so excited for your CD, Hymns. Tell me about this. And, and tell me how did you know my heart to make this CD? Well, that, <laughs> that must be a God thing right there. So uh, hopefully you're not the only one. I mean, 
you know what? Hey, we have a lot. I believe we have a new generation that doesn't even know these songs. And uh, I love the contemporary songs that are sung in churches, and there are a lot of great ones. But I, I think that we're doing a disservice to this next generation of, of, of them not hearing these great, great hymns that probably you and I grew up singing. And, um, you know, I, I, I sang these songs my whole life, most of them in my little church in, in Canova, West Virginia. And I've always wanted to do a hymns record. And I think when I first heard the Alan Jackson hymns record, I think that's sort of what spurred me on to put it back on the front burner and going, you know what? You got to do this record at some point. And then we started having conversations with Cracker Barrel and thought this would be a perfect fit uh, for this record to be a part of their stores. And that, this, that gosh, that, those talks started probably almost four years ago. And here we are, we finally got it done. And I'm really, really happy with this album. I really am. I'm just really excited. It's out this week, and you can get it at Cracker Barrel. I love that. Uh, I love the partnership with Cracker Barrel. They've got great food. Now they got your music. I think that'll work real good. There you Let go. me ask you, I know you can't have a favorite because... These are all the standard favorites, but if you could, which one do you think when you were creating this album, which one brought you closest to who you are? And when I say who you are, wonderfully and beautifully made within God. Um, that's kind of a hard question. I mean, the most emotional piece on the record for me is Were You There? And it's cut number three. It was just... You know, it's it's the it's the one song that I didn't sing a lot growing up, but I'd heard it all my life. I heard it in a movie one time, and because it's an old spiritual, and uh, I was thumbing through the hymn book and saw it again when we were picking songs. And I thought I I really want to do this song, and so when I sat down, I did it. It was kind of all on the fly. I was because I told my producer I want to do this live, and I sat down to play it and sing it live, and all of a sudden I just took my fingers off the piano and I just started to sing it a cappella. And it was extremely emotional when I sang it. And maybe it was because really one of the first times I'd sang that song in a long, long time. And I just got inside of it. I mean, I just owned it. I feel like I owned it and it moved me. And I sort of had to fight the tears a little bit when I sang it down as well. And so uh, to me, it's, the, it's my favorite moment, just maybe just because of the way the whole thing went down. And... Um, and then it's going to be surprising to see how many people maybe have not heard the song as well. But That's right. They have not heard it and will make this part of their, their spiritual repertoire. Michael W. Smith, this is such a wonderful project that you've done. I'd like for other people to experience the wonderfulness of it. So if they go to ValderBBShow.com, click on Email Valder, and put in Michael W. Smith, I'll know which CD you're talking about. We're giving away a few copies, courtesies of Michael's Camp. So if you want a copy, you want to have a great experience of a lifetime, get this CD. It truly is that. Michael Smith, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk about it. Thank you, Valder. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. It's my blessing and my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.